In this video, I want to talk about using Lightroom Mobile as part of your workflow. This is something that I have pretty much moved over to entirely this year. I do a lot of traveling and I've moved almost my entire workflow over to the iPad. I did a video last week where I talked about LumaFusion, which is the video editing software that I use. And it really has been a game changer in terms of the way I'm able to get my work done in a mobile situation. Even when I'm in the office, I'm not chained to the desk all the time. And I really like this workflow. And so I've talked about video and I want to get into some stuff with Adobe Lightroom today. But real quick, I want to give a shout out to our awesome sponsor today, who are the folks over at Skillshare. So if you haven't seen Skillshare, you need to check them out. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on photography, film production, design, and many other creative fields. A premium membership is going to give you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts in their fields. You can improve your skills, you can unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. So for example, we are on Skillshare's webpage right now. Uh, one course I've been watching a lot of lately, some of you guys are probably familiar with Jan Olsen, who is not only a fairly popular YouTuber, but also is several million followers on Instagram. And he has a whole course on editing images for Instagram. And if you're interested in his style and his approach, this is a really good course to get you going. Skillshare is one of the most affordable learning platforms out there. I mean, an annual subscription costs like less than $10. So if you head over to Skillshare using the link below, the first 500 people are going to get a two-month free trial. And so you can do, go to these courses completely free of charge. You've got absolutely nothing to lose or even purchase. Go check out Skillshare today by using the link in the description of this video. It's down below. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So I want to start by talking about this whole concept of using the cloud to sync. And I think this is one of Adobe's strong suits right now. And the idea is that if you're using the cloud to store your files, this, this means I can bring images into my iPad. If I'm on the road, I can bring them into my phone. And if you have syncing turned on, it uses the cloud and it syncs across devices. And I'll show you how it does this. And it also means that when you get back to your desktop, any images that you've brought in, any edits that you've made will all sync to the desktop as well. And actually, there's another place they sync to that a lot of people don't know about. Let's say that you don't have your device handy. You do not have a computer with Lightroom installed, but you need to get to an image, make a couple adjustments, maybe export it. You can actually do it through the website now too. So if you go to lightroom.adobe.com, and you log in. As long as you have the CC plan to do this with, it really is amazing. Now, I don't keep everything synced in the cloud, and I'll talk about why in a second, but anything I'm currently working on, so if I'm traveling, if I'm bringing images in, this just really works well for me uh, for a number of reasons. Let me show you a couple things you need to know before you get going on this. So if we're in the interface, what I want to do is I'm going to adjust two settings here I'm going to tell you about. If you click on the three dots at the top right-hand side of the screen, it's going to bring up a menu, and I'm going to click Settings. It's all the way at the bottom. Now, there's two settings that I want to draw to your attention. The first one is Cloud Storage and Sync. If you click on this, it's going to tell you how much cloud storage you've got. And I have 100 gigabytes that I'm working with right now. And basically, that's what my parameters are that I'm working within. Now, you can buy more storage if you want more in the cloud, but this is kind of what I do for, for purposes here. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing, this should be on by default, but it says only download smart previews under that. Make sure that slider is over to the right. This is how you're going to get the best efficiency out of working in Lightroom Mobile. And so essentially what that means is rather than downloading a raw file, so let's say I bring images in here and I put them on my iPad. They're synced up in the cloud and I go over and I want to use my phone. Rather than bringing in a raw file and spending all that time downloading it, it's going to download what it refers to as a proxy. And then you're going to make all your edits with the proxy. So there's no visual difference between the two that you're going to be able to see while you're editing, but it keeps it manageable in terms of size and space. Now, the second thing you might want to check, and this is on by default, and I don't care for it, but your mileage may vary. If I go to import, I'm going to go back out to that menu. I'm going to select import. The first one is photos, and this is auto add from the camera roll, and I don't want this on. It usually has it on by default when you install Lightroom, turn it off. The reason I don't is because, especially with my phone, I use my camera on there for a lot of utilitarian types of purposes. So I will photograph things to remember like a book cover or a title or something and or my parking meter or where my car is or I'll do screenshots and I don't really want those in my Lightroom catalog. And I noticed that they were all coming in automatically to my Lightroom catalog initially. So that may be something that you don't want like me 
turn it off. So that's where that is. So now we are ready to explore the Lightroom mobile interface. I'm going to show you another cool thing that I love, and it deals with presets. So pretty much everything that you can do in the desktop version of Lightroom, you can also do in mobile, but the interface might look a little bit different. I'll just give you a quick walkthrough here. If you go on the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to see these little icons. And this first one are all of your basic adjustments, and they're by category. So if I click on light and drop that one down, this is going to be exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, white point, dark point, so on and so forth. There's a little icon here for curves and so if I click that and I just want to click and drag to put some points on maybe give this just a little bit of an S curve super easy to do and then just select it again for that to go away uh, I can reset all my edits by going all the way bound down to the bottom of the screen here and you're gonna see this little arrow going over a line here and if I go in there I can reset all my adjustments now we're back to where we started so this is kind of the interface that you're used to using in Lightroom now here's one of my favorite parts of this is you can also sync all of your Lightroom presets now so if I click on the next icon down which is these two little circles that overlap here are all of my Lightroom presets now here's the deal you cannot do this from the classic version of Lightroom you need to open Lightroom CC and import your presets into that they don't sync with the with the classic version but if you're using CC all you have to do is open it up put your presets in there and they will automatically sync across to the mobile platforms and this is super awesome because if you're like me one of the things that I do is I have presets of things that I use a lot and I might want to use them as a starting point so for instance I've got some film looks that I have developed um, that I like to apply to an image and use that as a starting point so I've got my Kodak looking presets I've got my Fuji looking presets so for instance I've got uh, Kodakified warm which gives it a kind of a warm Kodak ish look I've got kind of a shift look if you want that color shift that you find in some of the Kodak films I also have a neutral uh, let's say that I want something more cinematic I've got one that I call Coppola and so these are going to be a little strong but at least it gives me a starting point so I can go ahead and say done on that then I can come back over here and let's go back up to the uh, adjustments I'm gonna go under light and let's check out the curves yeah you can see there's a pretty heavy film curve on here so maybe I just bring that back a little bit and make it a little less intense mess with your mids and your shadows anyway so this is a good starting point this is a good place to go and what's really cool now is now that I'm done with this let's say that I got to go to the next thing and I shut my my uh, iPad down and let's say a couple hours later I have my phone and I have a couple minutes I can open this up on the phone I can continue to edit it puts everything in the cloud everything syncs and it's just absolutely brilliant and so I think this is probably the strongest thing that Lightroom has going on right now now a lot of people ask me this because I've done tutorials with Capture One yeah I wish there was a mobile version of Capture One and I wish Capture One would invest in some kind of infrastructure to do syncing as well because I think Capture One in many ways maybe even a more powerful app than what you're able to do with Lightroom put an asterisk there because I'm gonna come back to that uh, light sorry capture one is not moving in that direction and so the way I work because my catalog is all set up from years and years of using Lightroom uh, the way I work is I will only bring in select images that I want to work on in capture one and then fortunately right now that's a desktop only activity now the reason I put an asterisk next to that is because Adobe made the announcement in October that they are going to be releasing this year in 2019 a full version of Photoshop for the iPad and one of the ways I like to work sometimes depending on what it is that I'm doing I like to take something from Lightroom and go and edit it in Photoshop and the way that it manages that in your catalog creates a copy makes a PSD file or a TIFF file depending on what you're working with then you can go in you can make all sorts of advanced adjustments using masks and layers and opacity changes and you can really unharness an unlimited potential of power and I think that if Adobe are able to bring that to the iPad it's going to be a pretty serious I it already is really pretty good but I think it's going to take it next level so it'll be interesting to see what they do on that so that is essentially my mobile setup I will link up to the Luma Fusion video if you are interested in editing video on an iPad and I'll answer a couple quick questions a lot of people have asked me which iPad I've got I've actually got two of them I've got the latest iPad Pro and then also have the 2017 or the previous year's model I actually prefer that one a little more I have the smaller one and I like the size better that's the one I actually travel with and here's another little unknown thing most people don't realize is when you're using a drive to bring images into the iPad I use the DJI Copilot that's co-branded with Lassie and when I bring them in it gives you the speed that things are coming in with and the USB is actually slower than the lightning port and this is something that Apple kind of have capped down and I really hope to see in the next iteration of the iPad 
at least a loosening of the noose that they put on using peripheral devices with the iPad because that's the biggest challenge. It's a little easier to work it with still images than it is with video because video files, especially if they're 4K, tend to be really big. But you don't need the latest and greatest iPad is my whole point. Um, I have both and I use both. But for my purposes, I actually like the previous year's model a little better. Uh, it's lightning adapter as opposed to USB. But other than that, you're not going to notice a huge difference. I mean, there's little things that actually have to do with the iPad. Like you don't have the facial recognition. It's still thumbprint. But anyway, that's my preference on that. If you guys would like to see more tutorials on either LumaFusion or Adobe Lightroom, let me know in the comments and ask specifically what you would like to see on these because I would be happy to do more. Um, this is just part of my workflow this year, and it's something that I've adapted and I've started moving away. I still use the desktop for some things, but I'm way less dependent than I have been on the past with it. And the fact that I'm able to do creative work in a mobile situation using a phone or an iPad or something like that, it just really works. By the way, LumaFusion works great on the phone too. The only shortcoming there is that when you're editing video, you're spending a lot of time on screen and it kind of hurts my eyes to be on my phone for so long. But that's my main preference for wanting to use an iPad on that. But it's really amazing. And I think that like, you know, Adobe also, because of the consideration they've given to mobile technology over the last few years, are really expecting uh, the proliferation of mobile devices to probably at least be on par with desktops because you're able to work in that kind of capacity now. And I think that's really important. So anyway, that's a little about my mobile workflow for still images. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.